Okay, so it's been a while, but we decided to come over to BVC to check out what our friends have been up to. We're in Tucson, Arizona. They've got a new shop, and here we're going to go inside and see what they've been playing with. Welcome. Oh, man. Dude, Yo. Blake, you're a special guy. You know why? <laughs> why is that? You got me here on Christmas. Wow, what a treat. <laughs> You could have a Santa hat and maybe the beard, that would have tied in together. You gotta good. get Alex uh, on the three-wheeler again, dressed up like Santa Claus. That's right. Alright gonna... guys, welcome to the new shop. We've got all of our CNC machines, our robots that uh, keep all these parts flowing out every day. We're gonna do a walk around and uh, check out some projects we've been working on. So, when I tested this bike originally two years ago, they've since gone to billet, as we said. We've shaved a lot of weight off the bike and uh, the best thing, made in the USA. Let's check out the other parts. So the last bike I rode, I rode it so hard we actually tweaked some stuff. So since then, immediately thereafter, BBC went back and beefed it up a bit. They've added some dial pins and they also doubled the size of the hardware. And that's always something good to say to the ladies. Yeah. We doubled our size and we saved weight. About going from a welded fabricated TIG welded swing arm to something that's billet, we were actually able to take something that was about 40 separate pieces. We're down to about eight pieces on these swing arms, which is insane. So you can imagine Drew welding for about a day and a half on a swing arm, because the lead time is yeah. generally very long because of the orders. So we're able to cut our lead time completely in half, just trying to automate our process and uh, speed up as much as we can. Yeah, less parts, less stuff can break, yeah. easier to put together. Exactly. So that's good. Something does get damaged while you're riding, shipping, it doesn't matter. Anything that's damaged on the swing arm, completely modular. You can just replace the pieces. Kind of see how this starts. We're removing quite a bit of the material to get left with that piece. You guys can see the center spine of the swing arm. This is kind of like the heart of the swing arm. It holds everything. And uh, that's the blocker right there. So my name is Giovanni and I work here at BBC. This is one of the products we have. This is all our inventory. The arms are pretty much all the same. The only part that switches or changes is the linkage point and the pivot point. It's like wiggles for a grown up. Build your this is a swing arm. <laughs> What is he doing in there? He's just welding on a pumpkin. Yeah, he's welding the battery box. Okay. So this is the old way to make the swing arm, which we still do a pile of them like this. Um, we've got a lot of components that get precision TIG welded and put together on these swing arms. And again, like welding and all that stuff is extremely tedious, so we've taken half our line and now we're offering it in billet, which is nice. But everything gets put together on a fixture and welded. And Now, Bill, why, what's the point to keep continue doing it this way? You have to do different bikes this way that are... Yeah, so some of the mini bikes, they're not as intensive to uh, to build like the 110s and the 125, so we right. can still produce these really fast. It's the big 450s and all that. We've just got so much benefit going with the billet now. Yeah, um, yeah it's just a higher quality product for those bikes. That's a nice weld. Oh, yeah. Clean, clean, with the grain, with the grain, we gotta, clean. Drew's been stacking dimes for days. Stacking So dimes. a lot of this stuff gets plasma cut or laser cut, depending on what supplier we use. Um, we do all the plasma cutting here in house. Um, we do all the tube cutting. So this is like a Bentec tube cutter that cuts all these pieces out. And we weld our fittings in for the jack shaft. And uh, yeah, we've got multiple fixtures. So you can kind of see that wall of fixtures. Um, it's all different bikes, all different models, um, subframe and swing arms. Uh, so we've got a couple TIG welding stations in here. And uh, this is just kind of the dirty room where all the welding and the grinding happens. <laughs> got a little plasma cutter action going on right here. Not the biggest one in the world, but we actually got tired of all the smoke inside our building at the last shots. So we built this outside area and got the Tube cutter over here. This takes uh, long material. We're able to cut 12 foot sticks and cut all of our, our tubing. Like I was showing in the last clip, you can see how it comes out raw and then it gets prepped in the sandblasters. Yeah, all the smoky, nasty stuff, it stays outside. Big boy triple clamp mm -hmm. here. This is actually for a KTM. And uh, we've got everything from the big bikes down to the little 110s. Awesome. We do a lot of CRF 110 kits. At least come with the steering stem already pressed in. Okay. 
And of course, you can't have a big wheel without a billet hub. So we've got a rack of hubs here, everything from the big bikes to the small bikes. Kind of give you an idea of what we got right there. Awesome. Yeah, the big thing with uh, with the billet is we can automate it. So everything is done on a CNC machine with high precision and speed. And uh, again, it cuts our lead time down. So, so we're trying to make everything out of billet. And uh, this guy likes to break hubs, so <laughs> we actually beefed it up for him for the next build. I think that was the chain was too tight. That okay. was the problem, remember? Yeah. I found out later that those chains on the Honda, I guess that was an issue that they had. That's true. Yeah, so That's we'll blame true. the chain. We'll blame the chain. <laughs> we can't have a shop without a shipping area. Correct. So we've got the bubble wrap, we've got the final shipping table, so everything kind of flows from the machine shop around the shop back to this area. All the bits and bobs that you can imagine for the big wheel kits. We've got hundreds of uh, part numbers, spacers, you know, rotor adapters. There's just hundreds and hundreds of parts just sitting over here that go to our kits. So we use setup sheets, everything gets uh, picked off the uh, inventory, put into a box and uh, assembled with the kit. And then it kind of flows back out that way to the shipping truck. <laughs> <laughs> we want to check out the bikes now, we'll right? Let's the bikes, man. That's why we're here. Okay. So. Uh, you've seen this on the old interwebs. So it's a big wheel, so naturally it's got to have a giant wheel. We've already discussed this in previous videos. But, Bill, what, this is a UTV tire, correct? Yes. Yes, we're running a 25-10-12 in the rear, 25-8-12 in the front. And uh, we're actually experimenting running the same tire front and, year, front and rear okay. with a wider wheel and we're able to actually change the profile and the roundness of the tire. So that's something we're gonna be working on. I'm actually gonna have you test that on that one. Yeah. So that has the same tire front and rear on the XR. So. Nice. Yeah, you can see how the wire back reel actually like winds the tire off. Yeah. Even though it's the same size. So it's kind of hard to explain unless you really measure it. Yeah. You're gonna notice it when you ride it. That's the, that's the beauty of it. Awesome. Yeah, and then we've got uh, a couple other bikes that were shipped here. So a couple more big wheels going on and uh, we've been very busy with, uh, with building them, you know. So just producing kits as we go. We're gonna have a free ride big wheel kit coming soon. This is a scanner, right? 3D scanner. A 3D scanner, so you yep. scan the part in, it's in the computer and then you can go update, make changes, correct? I bring it in the CAD and I draw all my parts around it. So I'm okay. actually able to take real life and put it in the computer. Pretty we'll cool. We'll insert some clips of that. Okay, so naturally, here they're doing big wheels so we had to get a well we had to shoot the big wheel uh, toolbox so that's what I'm calling it anyways snap on but it's got the giant wheels and it fits yeah it's got bigger wheels than most Hondas yeah you need to put a motor in this thing oh, and, no. and just drive it around the pits oh no man <laughs> should I uh, take my hair down and put the hat on first, the thing starts first kick every time this is where it all started for you guys so we had to pick up the original Naturally. And you guys saw a glimpse of it in the last uh, Blake test video. Yeah, his bars were right here oh after that one jump. <laughs> have, you ro have you rode this? I haven't rode this one yet. Did you have to ride this? Let me, let me roll up on it. Considering it's Christmas mm -hmm. and this is all we got today, so. Okay. First kick every time. First kick. Nice. Every, every time. This is it. We're on. It's a Honda. It'll start every time. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 The reason I hooked up with Bill in the first place was I grew up riding the Yamaha big wheel uh, back in the day, not that different than this thing. But of course the bikes have come a long way thanks to these guys, uh, where we started with drum brakes, pretty small suspension, a slower motor, not a lot of monitored amenities. We go over here and we've got all that. The fuel injection, a lot of power, the same nostalgic big tires, which is a lot of fun. Okay, so that's a wrap here. As you can see, BVC has been extremely busy. Um, if you're looking for a big wheel or a trike or even a quad, they've got anything you need. So give them a check out online. We'll see you guys next time. Gotta practice my enduro cross.